and welcome to this webinar, uh, Investment Strategies, How to Study for Long-Term Learning with the Scribe Writing Center at Covenant Theological Seminary. Um, I'm recording today from my home. Uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube or, or our library website, uh, this is being made during our um, coronavirus stay-at-home order. Um, I do have a two and four-year-old in the next room who are doing their best to be quiet and not bug their mother. Um, but if there are any interruptions, I apologize. Um, that's where we are today. Um, so investment strategies uh, for learning. Uh, chances are, uh, if you uh, are putting in the time, money, and effort to prepare and do well in your seminary classes, it's not so that you can get an exam with a good grade on it. That's not your end goal, right? Um, the A is not your end goal. The end goal is to develop the skills, the knowledge, the tools that you'll then carry with you in your years after seminary. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today are study strategies that's going to help you not just do well on an exam or learn how to integrate new material into your own thinking more effectively, but, but make sure that you're setting yourself up for the long-term usefulness of your time here. Um, so you don't study something, remember it for the exam, and then it's all gone, you know, 20, 30 hours later. Uh, we want you to be able to remember the, the tools that you're picking up um, three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road uh, to make these something you can use and not just know for that moment on the exam. Um, so I'm Dr. Katie Kinney. I, I uh, have a great deal of fun running the Scribe Writing Center. Uh, if you have any questions at the end of this webinar, I do uh, encourage you strongly to, to reach out to us. Um, you can email us at scribe at covenantseminary.edu. Um, and we are always happy to set up right now an online consultation, 20 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever would be most useful to you. Um, we can talk about study habits. We can talk about your writing process. If you have material written, Go ahead and bring it. We will screen share and get to talk about that together. Um, we really enjoy having productive, um, low stress uh, dialogues with students about their work. Um, so on to our topic for today. We're going to divide our conversation into two main sections. First, we'll talk about strategies you can use to promote recall. That is how well you can remember what you learned later on. Um, you put the information somewhere in there, how do you get it back out? Uh, and then the, the second half of this little presentation will be about making connections between what you're learning and other things that you already know, other things happening in, in your other classes, um, in your, the, the knowledge that you've already acquired and stored long term. Um, so that'll be the, the nuanced portion. First, we'll just remember it, and then we'll make sure we're remembering it with nuance, so it's really something that we can use and use well. So, recall. There's two main strategies um, for um, promoting recall. One of them is spacing. Effectively, this is kind of like um, the, the matrix, uh, there is no spoon, then the spoon. Uh, what I'm going to say next, that is to say that um, in order to remember something, you have to forget it, and then remember it again, and then forget it, and then remember it again, and then forget it and remember it again, and so on. What you're doing each time that you kind of forget part of it and then remind yourself of it is that you're strengthening those, you know, channels, I am not a neuroscientist, those channels in your brain that um, convey that information that allow you to recall it. Every time that you remember something, you're making that connection stronger and more likely to resist fading away. Um, so what does this mean? Um, a lot of times uh, as the semester goes by, we find ourselves at the end of the semester with all of a sudden a mountain of material to study and we call it cramming when in the last 24 hours before the exam, uh, you do nothing but breathe, eat, and study. Uh, this is an effective strategy for doing well on an exam. It is not effective if you want to remember the material a week later. <laughs> Um, a lot of that information we can put in our short term and our working memory, but it's not actually being transferred to our long term memory. In order to give our brains that benefit, we need to make sure that we are spacing our study materials. 
This does not mean that you have to spend more time studying. So instead of spending, you know, 10 hours one day at the very end of the semester studying everything you learned in class X, if you spend, I don't know, 30 minutes a week throughout the semester, uh, maybe every Friday you spend 30 minutes going over your notes, making flashcards, making study guides, writing practice exam questions for whatever you learned that week, and then rereading through those flashcards and um, exam questions you've made the previous weeks, you're probably not going to spend any more time studying than if you wait for the end of the semester. But you're going to be building those recall connections and you're going to be able to remember the material more effectively, more thoroughly, later on. So spacing out your study sessions. Um, it may also look, if you are in a situation where you are cramming, you only have a week left and you have five classes to study for, uh, try to space the material uh, within your study sessions. So maybe you are studying for a systematics class and a counseling class and a Greek class. Uh, instead of doing four hours of the counseling class, three hours of Greek and three hours of systematics, do 40 minutes of Greek, 40 minutes of systematics, 40 minutes of your next class and continue to, to rotate them so that you're, you're stepping away from the material and then stepping back. So ideally, you're spacing things out with a couple of days in between, allowing yourself to actually forget things so that you can learn those, those memory channels, begin to ingrain that into your brain for long-term memory. Uh, second best would be to space the material out during a longer study session. Um, so both of these will be more effective for long-term retention than cramming at the very end. Um, uh, one more key piece of information is that sleeping in between study sessions is really important. Uh, this is somehow uh, the way that our brain has the opportunity to lock things into long-term memory. Um, during the day, you know, when we're waking and working, uh, we have short-term memory, which is how you might be able to remember a phone number for the couple moments it takes you to type it into your cell phone. Um, and then we have working memory, uh, which, you know, might you know, we can remember a grocery list or something for the hour or two we need instead of writing something down. But long-term memory is more complicated. Long-term memory requires sleep. Long-term memory requires repetition. Uh, so remember these things um, when you are thinking about what your studying will look like and how you're going to invest your time on either uh, creating short-term or long-term memories for the material that is important to you. Um, Second uh, key for recall is to find patterns, or this my slide here should say patterns or systems, um, that you can put the information within. Uh, there may be uh, a pattern or a logical process, and you can create, you know, a concept map or have, you know, keywords to remind you of concepts with arrows in between, something that is going to be more graphic, more um, maybe have some sort of motion involved. Uh, in order to remember how it works. Um, or it may be if you are memorizing vocabulary uh, that you've got you know, different categories of category or categories of vocabulary uh, in which put them in. Having some sort of system or, or pattern can help us uh, begin to organize this information. Um, one uh, system that I have used uh, when I was studying for my doctoral comprehensive exams um, and I actually uh, learned about this before it was used on the popular um, British TV show, Sherlock, um, is to choose a location that is very familiar to you. Uh, I used my childhood house when I was growing up and in each room of the house, place a figure or a concept that you want to remember and be able to interact with. Uh, in the Sherlock show, he calls it his mind palace, which is how he remembers all the random facts and information. Um, so you may walk into the front door in mentally uh, of your chosen location and sitting there is Theologian Y. What do you want to know from Theologian Y? Have a conversation with him mentally in your head and you go on and you walk into the kitchen and Theologian X is there. What do you want to remember from her? Have a conversation with her uh, and walk to her yourself all the way through the building um, in your head. Uh, and remember who is in each room, how are they interacting with one another, what do you want to know from them. Um, 
It can just be a, a, a mnemonic, a tool that's going to help you uh, recall something that might be more unfamiliar. Put it in a very familiar space it will become more familiar as well. Uh, so second part of this conversation today is about making connections with your learning. Uh, one of the first uh, helpful things you can do is connect what you are learning to other long-term memories or to other things you're also currently learning. Uh, is a concept that you're studying this in this class reminding you of something you studied in another class, of a book you read five years ago, of uh, someone you know, of, um, I don't know, whatever it might be, connect it to that other long-term memory going to help seal in those pathways. Um, so what you're doing is you're making connections and you're elaborating the information. So it's one form of interacting with the information. That's the key here to remembering things with nuance, to being able to use them effectively and not just remembering them, um, is to elaborate on the information that you are picking up. Uh, another one you may have heard of before is prepare to teach the information. So you might not actually have to give a lecture or a presentation uh, on the concepts that you want to be able to, to store well. Um, but if you put yourself in the mindset of I'm going to have to explain this to somebody else, you're going to have to make connections uh, that you wouldn't ordinarily be making if all you wanted to do was remember X, Y, and Z. If you have to explain how, why they work, uh, you're going to be working with them more uh, more thoroughly, more deeply. Um, so what this might look like, maybe you would make a lesson out plan. So let's say you have theological concept X and you have given yourself 15 minutes to explain it, write the outline. If you're as though you were talking to an adult Sunday school, as though you were explaining it to your friend, what would you want them to know so that they can understand this concept? Um, you can write your own exam questions. This is a great one, if you, especially if you're doing it throughout the semester. And then at the end of the semester, open up that document. You have an entire practice exam, probably much longer than your professor's uh, actual exam that you can use to, to, um, to study, to practice recall, and to elaborate on the information you have learned. You might also consider, uh, if you're writing essay questions in your practice exam, uh, to make a rubric. What are the key um, points to the argument you would need to make to answer these questions you have written. What might your, your professor look for? What is it going to take for you to feel like you have mastered this material? What would you need to be able to answer? Um, or you may give yourself the question of, after this class, what does my instructor hope I will be equipped to do with this information or skill? Make it applicable. So you might be learning about, I don't know, doctrine about anthropology or eschatology or something. And it can be good head knowledge, but how are you going to use it? How does it affect the way that you interact with other people in ministry and service? Um, how does it affect um, other study interests of yours um, within theology? If you're, if you're looking to write more about it, um, make those connections and think about how will you use this information? Uh, that can also help us to elaborate, um, to practice recall, all of these things wrapped up in one. Um, it can also just give us more motivation for investing in our classes when we understand why and how we might use this in the future. Uh, finally, uh, interact with the material, and by that I mean study it critically. This does not mean that you need to look at everything you read or study uh, with an eye to disagreeing with it or finding the author's weak spots. Um, you do not need to be a confrontational person to be a, a powerfully critical thinker. Um, what it means to ask critical questions of the material you're studying um, can, can be several things. Some examples might be to ask yourself what assumptions are, or perspectives are underlying um, a theology and interpretation, the way that an author is approaching a concept. Um, what assumptions are they relying on? And conversely, if they uh, had different experiences um, or were writing to a different community that had different emphases, backgrounds, assumptions, how might what they're saying be received differently? How might someone from that community respond? Um, so some classic examples might be if we have a theologian 
you're an academic Western theologian, how is what they are writing, um, how would it be received and responded to perhaps by um, an African or an Asian theologian or a South American theologian? What would they be able to bring to the conversation that the, the Western European theologian would not and vice versa? How is the diversity of experiences, of assumptions, um, how can you use it to enrich the conversation as you are encountering it? Um, so how can you make the conversation bigger is a great way to read critically, um, to, to elaborate on the material that you are encountering. Uh, what you can also do that is a, a really helpful practice is even if you disagree with the, the major conclusions that an author is finding, locate something in their work that they did well. Uh, if it's not uh, the, the conclusions they came up with or the, the flow of their argument, then maybe there's something about their writing style that is engaging or accessible um, or was made something easier to follow. Um, make sure to, to point that out to acknowledge not only what you would not do yourself, but also what could you use that might be helpful? Um, always try to walk away with something that you can use. What can you learn from? Um, so that pretty much covers what I, I wanted to share about making connections with your work. Uh, so once again, you know, the two things you want to remember uh, for investing well in your study time is use habits that are going to help you uh, develop good recall long term, not just short term. Um, and also make connections throughout your, your studies, throughout your time. Um, frankly, it's going to be more interesting if you're making this uh, to be applicable, um, to be um, something that, that boosts your curiosity and isn't just something to pack in your brain, but it's going to be something that, to help you join the conversation in. Um, that is part of you know, graduate education. It's not just receiving information. It's also learning how to join the conversation, become part of the dialogue. Um, and so recall and making connections with this work are both going to be essential skills uh, for beginning to join that conversation. Um, so that's the conclusion of this webinar today. Uh, again, I'm Dr. Katie Kinney of the Scribe Writing Center at Covenant Theological Seminary. Uh, for our students, we are thrilled to provide uh, online consultations at this time. Uh, you can find um, our appointment scheduler on the library website, along with this workshop and many other uh, workshops and webinars and resources we've developed. Um, or you can always email us at scribe at uh, covenantseminary.edu. That's S-C-R-I-B-E at covenantseminary.edu. So I hope to hear from you soon and stay well. Thank you.